this is the 28th lecture of this course. This is the third lecture on bipolar junction transistors. Now, in the previous lecture, we have explained basically what the transistor action is. We said that transistor action is transfer of current from one junction which is forward biased to a nearby junction. Now, this transfer is complete if this nearby junction which is called the collector junction is very close to the emitter junction as defined by this particular relation that is W b is much less than L b. W b is the width of the base region here that is the distance between the two depletion edges. And secondly, the another condition for the transfer to be complete is that the doping N e that is the doping in the emitter should be much greater than the doping in the base. This is the relation. So, if these two conditions are satisfied, then you will have almost complete transfer of the current from the emitter junction to the collector junction or I c will be very close to I e. I c is equal to alpha times I e where alpha tends to 1. Now, what is the condition for this transfer on the bias across the collector junction? What we said is that if this bias is 0, that is the collector base is shorted or if the collector base junction is reverse biased, then in both these cases the transfer is almost complete. But if the collector junction is forward biased, that is if it is like this, the p region positive with respect to the n region, then the transfer is seriously affected and the transistor action therefore is seriously affected. So, we must ensure that if you want a complete transfer of the current from the emitter to collector, this junction should either be 0 biased or reverse biased. For the 0 biased case, the relation is I c is equal to alpha times I e. So, this is when V b c is equal to 0. The V b c is the voltage between base and collector and I c is equal to alpha times I e plus a small current if V b c is greater than 0. That is the base is positive with respect to collector or collector is reverse biased. So, in both these cases you have the complete transfer. This is the only small difference in the reverse bias and zero bias case, this current I c o. Now, in this lecture we will see how this transistor action can be used for the purpose of amplifying small signals. So, the topic in this lecture is small signal amplification. Now, let us look at the biasing arrangement for this purpose. The biasing arrangement is as follows. Small signal means that the emitter base junction is forward biased and this forward bias is incremented by a small value delta V b. Now, as a result of this forward bias change, there will be a change in the collector current delta I c. Of course, there will be changes in emitter and base currents as well. So, for example, the base current would become I b plus delta I b and the emitter current would become I e plus delta I e. So, there are the changes in response to the change in the controlling voltage that is the emitter base voltage. So, first step of amplification is to relate this change in collector current to the emitter base voltage. Let us see what is this change delta I c in response to delta V b. 
we can then build up other changes also that is delta i b and delta i e and then we will see how this change in collector current can help us to achieve the amplification. Now to begin with we will assume that the collector base junction is 0 biased. So here this is shorted. So what we will do now is if you start with the equation I c is equal to alpha times I e then we know that delta I c is equal to alpha times delta I e. Now this is the first step. Now what is delta I e in response to delta V e b? That is what we need to see. It can be easily shown that the relation between delta I e and delta V e b is nothing but the diode relation that is the relation between the current and the voltage across a diode. This can be shown easily as follows. Let us draw the minority carrier distributions in the emitter base and collector. So we are assuming that the base width is very small as compared to the diffusion length LB. So this distribution is almost a straight line as we have pointed out in the previous lecture and this distribution is exponential. So this is emitter, this is base and this is collector, this is delta P E and this is delta N E. This is P type region, this is N type region and this is again P type region. So this is the minority carrier distribution, excess minority carrier distribution when the emitter base junction is forward biased and the collector junction is 0 biased. We have drawn this in the previous lecture. Using this distribution, let us explain the relation between the emitter current and the emitter base voltage. Now delta P e according to the law of the junction can be written as delta P e equal to P n 0 exponential of V e b by V t minus 1, where the P n 0 is the equilibrium concentration of minority carriers in the base region. We can similarly write delta n e is equal to n P 0 into exponential of V e b by V t minus 1, where this is the equilibrium concentration of minority carriers in the emitter region. Now one point to note here is we have been using the symbol n suffix p0 also for the electron concentration in the collector under equilibrium that is minority carrier concentration in the collector because collector is also p type like the emitter. Now we may therefore think that there is can be some there can be some confusion actually what we will do is depending on the context it will be clear whether np0 corresponds to emitter or the collector for example here we are talking about delta ne that is the excess concentration of electrons in the emitter at the depletion edge therefore obviously np0 should correspond to emitter so depending on the context it will become clear whether np0 is related to the emitter or to the collector. Now proceeding further, how can we write the emitter current in terms of these concentrations? We again follow the p-n junction theory and we can write I e is equal to I e p plus I e n. So I e is the current across this particular emitter junction. I e p is due to these holes which are injected from emitter into base and I e n is due to these electrons which have been injected into the emitter from the base region. So we can write I e p is q into the diffusion coefficient of 
the carriers in the base into delta P E by W B, delta P E by W B is nothing but d p by d x in the base slope of this line. So, w b is this width. Now, here we have not shown the depletion edges or rather the depletion layer in the emitter and the collector to avoid any complicating the diagram. It is understood that this concentration corresponds to the concentration at the depletion edge and similarly, these other concentrations also correspond to concentrations at the depletion edge. So, Q into d b into delta P e by w b is the current density because of diffusion, where d b is the diffusion coefficient of holes. Let us explain this nomenclature. We are always going to consider the diffusion coefficient of minority carriers when we talk about the currents in a pn junction. Okay? So, we have only one suffix there which shows the region in which the minority carriers are being considered. So, d b would imply the diffusion coefficient of minority carriers in the base. Now, we should multiply this by the area of the emitter to get the current. So, this is I e p in terms of delta p e that is this current. Similarly, we can write I e n as area of the emitter into q into diffusion coefficient in the emitter into delta n e divided by L e, where L e is the diffusion length of electrons in the emitter. This is an exponential decay. So, you take the diffusion length of the electrons there. So, now we can combine this and these relations for delta P e and delta N e. And then we can write the expression for I e as I e is equal to A e into Q opening the brackets D b into P n 0 upon W b into the exponential of V b by V t minus 1. This we will move out of the bracket because this term will be common to both these terms. So, d b p n 0 by W b plus d e n p 0 by L e. Now, one can easily recognize that this particular term is nothing but the saturation current, reverse saturation current of the emitter junction and we will therefore, represent this as I suffix E 0. So, this is nothing but the diode law I E as a function of V E B is exponential and this is a reverse saturation current. Okay. So, as compared to the p-n junction theory that we have discussed earlier, the only difference is that here this term instead of the diffusion length, you are having the width of the particular region and this is because this is like a short region and therefore, the diffusion length in this region is being replaced by w b that is the width of that region. Because as we have said in our transistor, this W b is much less than L b, W b is much less than L b for the device to act like a good transistor or to have the efficient transistor action. That is why the L b is being replaced by W b here, this is the difference. So, now we can write this formula I e is equal to I e naught exponential of v b by v t minus 1 and coming back to our relations here, we need to obtain delta i c which is given by alpha times delta i e 
in response to delta v e b. So, now we can get delta i in response to delta v e b using this formula. So, we can write delta i e is equal to i e 0 exponential of v b by v t divided by v t into delta v e b. Wherein, if v b by v t is more than about 3 times v t, which will practically be the case, exponential v b by v t is much greater than 1 and therefore, i e 0 exponential v b by v t is nothing but i e itself. So, we can write this as approximately equal to i e into delta v e b by v t. So, that is quite interesting. The increment in the emitter current is proportional to the increment in the emitter base voltage and the proportionality constant is i e by v t. So, substituting this relation in this formula here, we can write delta i c is equal to alpha times i e upon v t into delta v e b, wherein alpha times i e nothing but i c. So, this can be further simplified to i c upon v t into delta v e b. So, delta i c is nothing but i c by v t into delta v b. So, the increment in collector current is proportional to the increment in the emitter base voltage. Please note that this is a consequence of the exponential dependence of the emitter current on the emitter base voltage and since most of the emitter current is transferred to the collector, the collector current also depends exponentially on emitter base voltage and therefore, when you differentiate or when you take increments, you end up getting a linear relation between the increment in the collector current and the increment in the emitter base voltage. This term I c by V t has dimensions of 1 by resistance or conductance and therefore, we can represent this using a symbol G m and we can write this as G m delta V b. This G m is called the trans conductance. So, that is a relation between the increment in the collector current and the increment in the emitter base voltage. Now, let us see how this increment in the collector current can be used for purposes of amplification. Suppose, we pass this current through a resistor. R and we try to find out what is the voltage change across this resistor as compared to the voltage change in the emitter base voltage. Okay, voltage change, uh, the change in the emitter base voltage. Let us try to relate the change in the emitter base voltage to the change in voltage across this resistor R because of the increment in collector delta IC. Now, we shall call the increment in the voltage across the resistance as delta V naught that is we shall assume that the voltage across the resistance is the output voltage. The V e b emitter base voltage is the input voltage and voltage across the resistor is the output voltage. So, we will denote this as delta V naught and we write delta V naught is equal to R into delta I c 
now expressing delta ic in terms of delta vb we can write the relation delta v not by delta veb as r into delta ic is nothing but gm delta vb so r into gm so delta v not by delta vb is simply r times gm where gm is ic by vt now ic corresponds to the voltage veb so when you make an increment in the emitter base voltage what you find is that there is an increment in the voltage across the resistor which depends on gm and r now if r into gm is greater than 1 then we find that we have an amplification because delta v not is more than delta vb the change in the output voltage is more than the change in the input voltage so let us put some typical values and see how much can delta v not by delta vb be in practice let us assume these values which are typical ic is equal to 1 milliampere supposing we set up 1 milliampere of current in the transistor let us take room temperature so vt is 0.026 volts and let us assume a resistance of 1 kilo ohm we we have r into gm is given by One thousand ohms into one milliampere upon zero point not two six volts. So ohms into ampere by volts. This cancels, giving a dimensionless quantity. 10 power minus 3 and this cancels so 1 by 0.026 that is 1000 by 26 so gm r times gm is equal to 1000 by 26 so this is close to 1000 by 25 that is about 40 is about 40 less than 40 maybe around 38 or something we want just an approximate figure so about 40 so you find that the change in the voltage across the resistance is 40 times the change in the voltage across the emitter base junction so this is what me is meant by amplification so this is what is small signal amplification so delta vb is a input small signal delta v not is output small signal and the ratio between these two voltages small signal voltages is 40 so you are getting a voltage amplification here we emphasize that this amplification is for small signal so we are not taking the ratio between v not and veb please understand this v not is the voltage across the resistance r because of this current ic plus delta ic and vb is the dc voltage so we are not taking the ratios of the dc current total current and total voltage we are taking the ratios of the increment in the voltage across the resistor and the increment in the emitter base voltage this is therefore an incremental picture this is what is meant by a small signal amplification this point should not be lost sight of now there is one catch here and that is you see if you pass this current ic through the resistor it develops a voltage drop which is like this now delta v not only corresponds to ic so strictly speaking this is v not plus delta v not okay since we are only concerned about the delta v not in response to delta ic we showed delta v not 
So, this is the voltage drop because of IC plus delta IC. Now, obviously, this voltage drop is going to come here. This appears like this across the junction. So, moment you put a resistance here in this collector to base lead, actually your collector base junction has got forward biased by this much amount. And as we have discussed in the previous lecture, if there is a forward bias across the collector base junction, then your transistor action is destroyed. We cannot write IC is equal to alpha IE, where alpha is very close to 1. Now, that being the case, actually these formulae that we have derived are not valid for this particular circuit unless we do something to bring this voltage back to 0 bias. If we can bring this voltage across the collector base junction back to 0 bias, then all that we have discussed is valid. Now, this is what is important for using the transistor as an amplifier, small single amplifier. How can we do it? One simple way of doing that is you include a battery whose polarity is opposite to that of the battery here. So, that would mean we must include a battery which is positive on the base side and negative on the collector side. Now, you can see when you go like this, this voltage will compensate this voltage and if you choose this battery to be exactly equal to V naught plus delta V naught, then this voltage will return to 0. Let us call this voltage VCC, that is C stands for collector. So, this is actually a collector voltage between collector and base. Now, if VCC is exactly equal to V naught plus delta V naught, then this is 0, collector base voltage is 0 and then this formula is valid. Now, can you always maintain the VCC equal to V naught plus delta V naught? Obviously, this is not possible because delta Vb means you are changing the emitter base voltage and this is going to change the delta IC and therefore, delta V naught. So, as you go on changing your emitter base voltage, your delta V naught will change and therefore, you will have to keep changing your VCC in conformity with the emitter base voltage. So, if Vb for example, is a sinusoid, your VCC will also have to be a sinusoid of appropriate amplitude because it must compensate this voltage. Now, it is obviously not possible. You cannot have a battery whose voltage is going on changing with time. This is practically not possible. So, what do you do? Now, this is where we make use of another result that we obtained in the previous lecture. That is, that even if the collector base junction is reverse biased, the transistor action is not seriously affected and we can still write I c is equal to alpha times I e except that there is going to be a small current I c o, but when we take increments delta I c in response to delta I e because of delta V b, there will not be any significant change in I c o. This current is a reverse current of the collector base junction which is reverse biased and once the reverse bias is more than 3 times V t any change in the collector base reverse bias does not change this ICO and therefore, we can still write delta IC is equal to alpha times delta IE when we take increments because delta ICO is 0. That being the case, this formula will still hold even if this is reverse biased. Now, what this means is that we can choose a VCC whose value is such that it compensates this voltage whenever it is maximum. So, this V c c is equal to V naught plus delta V naught the maximum value of this. And when this voltage reduces because of change in the emitter base voltage, in that case the junction will get slightly reverse biased. So, for example, let us take V c c equal to V naught plus delta V naught. Supposing this is what we have chosen. So, when your V e b is maximum, delta V e b increment is maximum, 
then this is the voltage and at that point this is zero bias. Now suppose this voltage now becomes VEB and therefore this current becomes IC and therefore this becomes V0 then you can see that delta V0 a bias equal to delta V0 will appear here but it would be reverse bias because this voltage is more than this voltage it would be a reverse bias the bias with this polarity and under that condition this equation will be valid but for incremental purposes the same old equation that we considered will be valid and therefore our entire analysis will hold. Therefore the moral of the whole story is that you will have to include a power supply in this lead whose magnitude is equal to the maximum voltage drop across the resistor when your emitter base voltage is changing. So let us put these back. Now this is a circuit that will behave and it will give you amplification. Now is not there any effect of reverse bias across the collector on the amplification? We said that as far as this equation is concerned the collector current is equal to alpha times IE plus IC0. The IC0 is the only addition okay, as far as DC is concerned. Now as far as AC is concerned that is when you make increments in the currents is the amplification not affected by the presence of a changing reverse bias across the collector base junction. So let us examine this issue in little detail. So the effects of reverse bias across the collector base junction. There are two main effects that we will show. The first is the following. Now, because of the presence of ICO, a difficulty is that if the temperature goes on changing, which is what can happen in practice, then this IC will go on changing with temperature, even if you keep your IE constant by maintaining BEB constant. So, supposing you consider the situation when there are no increments. So you are, have set up a VEB here and as a result you have the current set up in the transistor. Now for some reason the temperature starts changing. This happens in practice. What are the reasons because of which temperature can change? One reason is that the transistor is dissipating power and this power is dissipated as heat after all you have voltages and currents in the transistor and obviously the voltage into current that much power is dissipated in the device. So as heat that power is dissipated as heat therefore the temperature of the transistor can rise. Similarly ambient temperature can rise okay your temperature in which uh, temperature of the uh, room in which you are setting up this device as an amplifier can rise. So because of these various reasons temperature can change. And in such a case, this ICO will change rapidly with temperature. We know that ICO is a reverse saturation current of a PN junction and as we have explained, it doubles approximately for every around 10 degree centigrade, okay, around 8 to 10 degree centigrade rise in temperature for silicon diodes. So silicon transistors also similarly ICO will change rapidly with temperature. Now as a result of this, the bias point of the transistor under DC conditions is also called the quiescent point can shift. So the shift in quiescent point with temperature. So I want to emphasize what is meant by the quiescent point. The quiescent point means the collector current and the 
uh, collector current and the collector base voltage when there is no signal. So, when there is no disturbance, quiescent means calm. So, this means the condition when there is no delta V E B. So, when there is no signal, you have a certain collector current here and then you have a certain collector base voltage. Those two, the I C and V C B is referred to as the quiescent point. So, what is happening is that when your temperature increases, the I C O changes rapidly as a result of which I C changes because of which V naught changes because of which the V C C minus V naught which is the voltage drop here goes on changing. Now, what is the effect of that? The effect is that your swing capacity of the amplifier is reduced. That is the maximum signal amplitude that can be amplified is reduced. Why? Because what is the maximum signal that you can amplify? It, this depends on the difference between V C C and V naught when there is no signal. If the I C is more, this voltage drop or V naught is more, the difference between V C C and V naught is less. Therefore, you can only increase as we have seen earlier, you can only increase the V naught until it becomes equal to V C C. If V naught becomes more than V C C, then this will be forward biased and the transistor action will be destroyed. So, the difference between V C C and V naught that is the difference between the voltage drop across the resistor and the collector power supply represents the maximum voltage that you can get at the output as a result of the signal amplification. So, signal voltage that you can get at the output depends on the difference between V C C and voltage drop across R which depends on I C. If I C is more that difference is less and therefore, the maximum swing of the amplifier, the maximum input voltage that it can amplify or the maximum output signal voltage that you can get is reduced. So, shift in quiescent point with temperature reduces the swing. of the amplifier. This is one effect of the reverse bias across the collector base junction. Okay. Now, this is happening because this I C naught cannot be controlled by any means. This dependent on temperature and this cannot be controlled. If I even if I want to maintain I E constant, I cannot control this I C naught. So, this lack of control of this current that is coming about because of reverse bias is the cause of this shift in quiescent point with temperature. The next important thing that happens is the reduction in amplification because of what is called base width modulation. Let us understand what is this base width modulation. The base width modulation is the change in W B with change in V B or I C because of the change in the depletion width here. Now, as we have said the voltage drop across this junction depends on the difference in the voltage of the power supply and the voltage drop across R. When you introduce a signal, V B changes, I C changes, this voltage changes and this voltage here is changing. So, when the amplification is taking place, when signal amplification is taking place, collector base voltage is changing with time and therefore, the depletion width is also changing with time. Now, because of the change in depletion width, the W B is also changing. So, this variation in W B this variation in W B in the presence of signal is what is called base width modulation. Let us see how the base width modulation can reduce the amplification. When the collector current is maximum, the difference in these voltages is minimum here. Okay. Therefore, the base width is small. When the base width, uh, when the, uh, I am sorry, the depletion width across the collector junction is small. When the depletion width is small, the base width is large. 
let us show this effect by exploding this particular portion of the diagram. So, we will exaggerate the collector base depletion width for one, uh, this is the collector junction, this is the emitter junction, this is the collector base depletion width, this is emitter P plus N, P plus plus N plus and P. So, this is the collector depletion width for one reverse bias across the collector base junction. This is another collector depletion width for another reverse bias across the collector base junction, higher reverse bias. So, when the collector current is more, VCB is less. So, let us say this dotted line corresponds to current IC then the solid line depletion region will correspond to IC plus delta IC. Because when the collector current is more, this voltage is more and difference in this voltage which is this voltage is less. So, the depletion width is less. So, IC plus delta IC is solid line this and IC is the dotted line. So, we can see therefore, this is the difference in the emitter base width, uh, in the uh, yes width of the base region. So, we have not shown the emitter depletion layer here, you can show that. Change in this is small, so we are not showing the change here. So, this difference from here to here is the base width. So, this is the delta WB. Now, this is the base width modulation effect. Now, as a result of this base width modulation, your amplification will reduce. Okay. How do we show that? We know that the change in the base width is going to affect the alpha of the transistor. Okay. So, in this particular equation, delta IC equal to alpha delta IE is not exactly correct when the base width modulation is present because this assumes that alpha is constant when you make the change. So, the correct equation in the presence of base width modulation is delta I c is equal to alpha delta I e plus delta alpha I e. Now, depending on this delta alpha, your delta I c in presence of base width modulation can be more or less. For example, if this delta alpha is negative, then this term will subtract from this and therefore, in the presence of base width modulation, your increment in the collector current because of increment in the emitter base voltage will be less. And as we can, we will show, this is exactly what happens, delta alpha is negative. When you increase the collector current, the alpha decreases and delta alpha is negative. How do we show that? For this purpose, we must derive an equation for alpha. This equation can be derived as follows. We have written down in earlier lecture, the equation for alpha is gamma into B, where gamma is injection efficiency, B is base transport factor, where gamma is 1 by 1 plus IEN upon IEP and B is 1 minus IR by IEP, the base transport factor B is nothing but the ICP, the whole current reaching the collector divided by the whole current injected from the emitter and that whole current reaching the collector is nothing but the current injected from the base minus the recombination taking place in the base. So, from there we get this relation. You can just look over your notes of your previous lecture, we know this is the relation and now you can write equations for these terms using the minority carrier profiles 
that we have derived uh, a minor equations for minority carrier concentration. Okay. So, drawing the diagram again here quickly. Now, I e n by I e p will depend on delta n e and delta p. We can write this as delta n e into q into d e by l e. Let us shift this l e here. I e p is q delta p e into d b by w b. Of course, you also have the areas, emitter areas coming both in numerator and denominator. Now, this q cancels and a e cancels and delta n e by delta p e we can write in terms of the doping levels. So, delta n e by delta p e will be in the reverse ratio of the doping in the emitter and base that is delta p is inversely proportional to doping here. So, doping in the base will come in the numerator and doping in the emitter will come in the denominator. So, I e n by I e p is therefore, we can remove this and write it as So, transferring that information here, this is equal to 1 by 1 plus n b d e w b upon n e d b l e. Similarly, we can write I r by I e p. I r is the recombination current which is related to this area. So, we can write I r by I e p here. Now, this area is half of delta p e into w b, this area under the triangle, this difference is w b, the base width. Now, this area multiplied by the charge q multiplied by the area of the emitter A e. So, A e into W b is the volume and the recombination current will depend on the stored charge divided by the lifetime in this region. Let us call the lifetime in the base region as tau b. So, charge by lifetime, this is from the law of the junction is a recombination in this region. So, divided by I e p, we can rewrite that equation which we wrote for I e p q delta p e d b into L B. Of course, the area of the emitter also comes there. Now, we can see that we can cancel this Q, we can cancel this delta P E, we can cancel this A E and we therefore get from here, this is equal to W B upon, uh, I am sorry here, this will not be L B, this will be W B, because the slope of this line is delta P by W B. So, this is delta P by W B. So, you get W B square, W B into W B is W B square by 2 D B into tau B. is nothing but W B square by 2 L B square. So, I R by I E P is W B square by 2 L B square. So, we can write this here.
So, this is the expression for alpha and it shows how alpha depends on base width Wb. Okay? You can clearly see that if Wb is much less than Lb, this quantity is negligible and therefore it becomes close to 1. Similarly, if Wb is much less than Le, it is small Wb and also if the base doping is much less than emitter doping, this quantity is very small and again this tends to 1 and that is how alpha tends to 1 for Nb much less than Ne and Wb much less than Wb. Now, what is important to see from here is that as your Wb increases, your alpha this term will increase and also this whole term will become less and therefore, your alpha is going to reduce. So, as Wb increases, alpha reduces. Therefore, because of increase in Wb, the increment in alpha will be negative. So, when you increase delta Ic, what we have seen is that the collector base voltage reduces, which means the depletion width reduces and delta Wb therefore is increasing. So, base width modulation is increase in the base width when your collector current is increasing and increase in the base width causes alpha to fall. Therefore, delta alpha in response to delta Ic will be negative. So, this we can write this as alpha delta Ie minus modulus of delta alpha into Ie. So, now this is a positive quantity subtracting from this quantity and therefore, it clearly shows delta Ic is negative. Therefore, the increment in the collector current is negative. Okay? Uh, sorry, the increment in the collector current is reduced. It is not negative, it is still positive because this is more than this, but the increment in the collector current is reduced. Therefore, your amplification is affected, it is reduced because amplification depends on delta Ic. Okay? So, this explains how base width modulation reduces amplification. So, we can write this statement as Wb increases, alpha falls. Therefore, the base width modulation we will abbreviate as BWM base width modulation. Therefore, BWM reduces amplification. So, these are the two effects of the reverse bias. So, base width modulation uh, affects amplification to some extent and also, it results in change in the quiescent point with temperature, which affects the swing. But for these two effects, your gain of the uh, transistor is quite large, as we have shown, the voltage gain is large. Okay? And therefore, the device works very well as an amplifier. Now, please note that it is a small signal amplifier, you are in only amplifying small signals. So, you are superimposing a small signal over a DC voltage and that small signal or disturbance you are amplifying. Now, one person, a person may get a doubt that if there is an amplification, then it means there is a power gain. Okay? Now, how can there be gain in power? Your output signal power is more than input signal power. Okay? How can this happen? Because conservation of energy should be there. So, it is to be understood here that there is an increase in the AC power. Okay? So, if you see the input power, input power of the small signal here and compare that with this small signal output power, the output small signal power is more than input small signal power. But this output extra small signal power is coming from the power supply. So, what the amplifier is doing is it is converting DC power into AC power. That is why it is called an active device. Transistor is called an active device because it converts DC power into AC power. Okay? So, uh, the diagram is something like this. You have a system, 
you have DC power as input, you also have AC power as input. Now, you have AC power output. Now, this small signal AC power P O and if this is P I, P O is greater than P I, but there is this DC power that is coming in. Okay? So, you are supplying energy from the power supply. Okay? So, one should not think that you are getting something out of nothing. Okay? You are getting an AC power amplification, but definitely you are supplying DC power. Only in the presence of DC power, the amplification can take place. So, unless you have DC conditions maintained, you have VEB, IC and VCC, you cannot have the small signal amplification. Okay? So, with this we complete the uh, important application of the transistor action namely small signal amplification. We have explained how you can get a voltage gain. Okay? One can also show how you can get a current gain this we will see in the next class. Thank you.